How's it going? Is it going now? Show me a thumbs up. Thumbs up. Hey, welcome to the Digital Forge. My name is Ian Robinson. You might know me as IR Sculpts. What's up, everybody? It's my new show. No, I'm just kidding. Hey, it's Mike, everybody, and this is the premiere of Ian Ian's new show. But I'm not going to tell you about it. Uh, I'm going to let Ian come in and tell you about it. Here we go. Here's Ian. Hey, what's up, Mike? How you doing? What's up, man? Welcome to your new show. Thank you, thank you. What's up, everybody? <laughs> Welcome to my new show. Uh, I'm here with the Stylus League, and it's going to be super fun. Where we're going to do a lot of cool stuff, a lot of fun projects from sculpting, texturing, maybe some fancy clothing, some really cool stuff. Let me know if you guys in the uh, chat can hear us okay, doing all that good fun stuff. But you know what? Without further ado, let's let's just hit let's hit the magic button. Hey, that was awesome. Awesome Shut production, up, baby. You got, Look at you got that. Production value. Oh, so, so freaking good. I love it. It was awesome. Yeah. So thank you all for having me. This is super fun. Uh, this is going to be a little bit different. If you see me on my Maxon uh, streams where I'm working and I'm showcasing ZBrush and answering a bunch of questions, this is going to be a little bit different because it's all about artistry. It's all about hanging out. It's about making cool stuff and doing all that fun jazz. So and hanging out with cool people. So I'm super excited to just get in and just start going. And of course, too, I always have my eye on the chat. So you guys can ask me questions. But, you know, again, I'm going to be just sculpting, having fun and uh, kicking ass, taking names. So all that good stuff and hanging out with guys like Mike and Bradley and Rahul and anybody else who wants to join in from time to time. Super excited to go in. So let's bring Mac, uh, Mike back up here. Let's pull up our Z brushes and let's let's go for it. So, bam, and I'm going to. Real quick, come over here. Let's switch to my main screen. There it is. Got some ZBrush happening. Mike, I need one of those really fancy uh, Iron Man intros like what you got. That's super dope. <laughs> okay, I will send that over to you now that you're a member of the member of the league, my friend. You got it. Oh, heck got yeah, it. man. Heck yeah. So I'm starting from scratch, and I'm going to showcase a little bit about uh, what I'm going for as a whole. So I'm going to bring up my pure ref who here is a God of war fan. Um, and if you've never heard of God of war and it just sounds awesome, just thumbs up <laughs> because I'm going for uh, a new fan art piece. I wanted to start off the show pretty strong. And so we are going to be forging some weapons, uh, you know, from the underworld, the depths of what is, you know, the blades of chaos and some other stuff. So I'm, I'm going to be calling it back in this piece to essentially the original trilogy but with a new flair to it so i have this as kind of like an idea reference however i've already started this project um so we're going to be focusing on getting the cyclops today but the project i've already uh, essentially started and i'll load them up here just to catch everyone up was a piece i had over the weekends or not weekend of the holiday break where i really wanted to create um a three character piece statue so right now is my base sketch of one of the undead legionnaire characters and let's just kind of give a little turn here so you could see so we're going to be making a cyclops on top of this and the idea of this Ian? piece yeah you know what you might want to share your screen i think you get a higher resolution and then you'll be front and center and then i'll be off to the side if you want to do that ah this is cool this works no, 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 um, do, do that, do, do that, do the thing. Do it, do, it. Yeah. do the thing. Okay, share your screen, okay, me... share your screen. Let me see. It's going to look much nicer. Okay, so just go back to reshare screen, share to Nanny. here we yes, go. Sir. Screen, screen, which one is this, screen one? This is screen one. Mm. Nope, that's screen, that's screen two. Bam, there we go. Allow, oh, wow. bam, how about that? There it is. And now let's go back over to my... Um, my OBS for just a second, and I'll put me over here like this. Nope, that doesn't work that way, does it? Or does it? Does that work that we can way? Go like this. Yeah. There we go. Which way there you want to be? Right there? Like that? Perfect. Okay. That works. Works for me. Nice. Awesome. So, yeah, so I'm going to be doing the Cyclops today, but wanted to just showcase. So, this is where I'm at right now with the uh, Undead Legionnaire. So, this can be, like I said, a three piece 
uh, a three character statue piece. And the idea in my head is that the Cyclops is going to be just like either his head's going to be ripped off and the eyes going to be gouged out while Kratos is on top of that, shredding this guy in half with the Blades of Chaos. I think it's going to be pretty awesome. So we're going to do Kratos last. We do Cyclops today. We'll see how far we get in a few in a couple hours, and then we'll go from there. So, yeah, lots of fun stuff happening. Yes, somebody said nice. God of War. You absolutely know it. <laughs> and while I do nice. that, Mike, what are you working on, bud? Uh, I am working on hair. That's all. <laughs> just, just hair. No, I was. Uh, I uh, I had my cami piece that um that I'm finishing up for the print. And uh, just getting uh, getting some dynamic hair on her for the uh, for uh, the statue that we'll be selling soon. But this is not this is not about me, Ian. This is all about you, brother. I'm just here to support you. you know awesome, what I'm saying? awesome. Thanks, man. All right, so let's go ahead and start our block out. This is going to be super fun. So I have my reference, of course. Cyclopses are dope as as hell, dude. I love cyclopses because this is a chance to basically destroy anatomy while still making it look really good. <laughs> so I'm going to be using here, I'm going to be using some Z spheres to block this guy out. So let's go ahead. I'm just going to hit D on here. We're going to go ahead and get some shapes in. Wee. All right, cool. What's up, Chris? How's it going? What's up, O? Zachary, yes. How's everyone doing today? Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. All right. So let's get some fun shapes. So I'm just going to build my armature here. Let's get something just roughly. If, you, if you've ever seen me work before, you guys can tell. I, I literally just don't care too much about topology in the beginning stages. I just want to get something looking halfway decent. Let's move this guy right here. Boom. Let's get this up. All right. So, Ian. Yeah. You said God of War. What, 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 what's this God of War you're talking about? What's that from? Where, where would I know that from? So, God of War a... uh, two, 2005 is a video game originally created by a guy named Dave Jaffe. It was from Sony Santa Monica uh, Studios. Um, so, it's, it's, it's based on Greek mythology. Um, mm. Basically, a guy named Kratos. He uh, he's a ruthless uh, general of the Spartan army. And mm -hmm. long story short, he uh, ends up losing to some barbarians who threaten his homeland. And so he mm -hmm. uh, he takes um, uh, a pledge of allegiance to the God of War Ares. And in doing so, he ends up being tricked into murdering his family and and the oh. and Ares wrath. And so he he basically decides to um, you know go against and kill the God of War, which mm. that's just game one. <laughs> so it's a so it's a family it's a family oriented tale, a heartwarming story about uh, a dude, a dude just doing yep. stuff, nice stuff okay. and things, hundred percent, yep, <laughs> nice, All right. So yes, no, oh, who doesn't know God yeah. of War? It's an awesome game. That game is amazing. Yeah, I freaking love it. One of my favorite. And of course, to, you know, have to shout out the Santa Monica team and, you know, in the last couple iterations of it, such a fun, such a fun rendition uh, and continuation too. Which I played that a lot during the holiday break. Basically went through and replayed all of them because I just love it so much. Oh yeah. yeah. So here we're just focusing on this this block out. Get block. get a basic shape in here. All right, yeah, my headphones went out if you were saying anything to me. Technical oh just talking. I talk through my process. That's something I do a lot. You got to see those guys, right? Didn't you go to uh to Sony Santa Monica and show them zebra stuff? I got to see them. Yeah. Um, I didn't go to their studio. It was the year before last. We got to talk uh -huh. with them a lot um, for the summit as they were as they were a guest in the 2022 Zebra Summit. So, yeah, we got to hang out with the team, have uh, Grissetti and everyone else on the team uh, show up as well. So super fun. 
I would love That's to awesome. go and actually see the studio. That would be really Absolutely. cool. I'm actually, I'm, the office I work at is actually pretty close by to there. So, dude, what are you doing? I would have been there already. I you know, know, you know when I came to visit you guys, man. I I uh, I went to sideshow and came over to visit you guys. I was like, I'm doing my Willy Wonka tour. Yes, my two favorite yes, places. Dude, you have to, man. I've been to Sideshow as well. Those guys are super fun. You were there for, um, what was it, the, the Summit, right? Summit, uh, yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Now, do you always block out from a uh, um, uh, from Z-Spheres first? Uh, n it depends. So in this case, okay. because it's a fantasy character... I uh -huh. do because I have a base mesh. I build a base mesh for my main characters like this uh, Legionnaire over here on the left. I built okay. um, a generic base mesh. Um, and then from there, I work off of that throughout the year and modify it. But because okay. he's a fantasy character of a Cyclops and the anatomy mm -hmm. is, it's close enough to humanoid, but it's still kind of made up a bit with the way it is. I kind of right. decide to start from scratch on something like this because then i can focus on the proportions i want to see you know he has mm -hmm. his uh and lock that stuff in ahead of time so this kind of helps Definitely. me process a little bit more whereas with this because they're so close to like an average male with mm -hmm. muscles i i just mm -hmm. don't want to sit spend the time blowing it up and such sure yeah what up Travis? have you been watching what uh oh sorry i didn't talk about me oh, have yeah, you no been matter. watching what uh, uh what Pavlovich has been doing with a uh, character creator. I have, yeah, yes. It's crazy, and right? I want it, dude. It's insane. I, I actually want to get a little bit more into it, but I'm currently learning Marvelous Designer. Nice. So that's that's something I'm kind of focused on a little bit. Yeah, that's dope. Have you been playing with it? Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. In fact, um, the pose on this cami was done in there. So um, yeah, it's awesome. I want to get to the to the Mike Pavlovich level, though. You know what I mean? Like his his workflow is insane. Dude, the guy is just a beast, and I love it. <laughs> I so so my wife and I watch this thing on on YouTube now. It's this guy who just gets these videos of weird like paranormal stuff, and uh, and I'm fairly certain that 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 Mike is not an actual person. I think he might be an alien. Maybe might be. he might be. Um, yeah, his level of output is too high for an actual human being. So, <laughs> you know, dude, for me, I, I tell myself like, OK, I have kids, right? I got a full time yeah. job. And then yeah. on top of it, I try to take like five minutes for myself sometimes. And then I mm -hmm. want to improve my art. So then I take lessons when I can just like so many things on my plate. And then I'm thinking like, OK. I don't know how any one person does it. The person who confuses me the most actually is Grissetti uh -huh. because he has yeah. kids. He has a full-time job. He does a lot of stuff. I'm like, how does he do it? <laughs> Dude, He's yeah. Like, the two of them. There's a there's a bunch of people that are like that, like Daniel Bell too. Like, you know what I mean? Like, calm down. You you guys are making us look bad. But uh they get a lot done. Yep. All right. Let's get some mitts on this guy here. Do you guys watch the Daniel Bell sideshow ZBrush file streams? Says uh, Jamie. Oh, can you show these questions too? I can do that, right? I can uh, do a show see. on stream. Bam! There it is. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've caught Daniel Bell's sideshow ZBrush streams. I've also seen some of his other ones. Um, I don't always understand what he's saying when he speaks in, uh, was it Portuguese, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 I don't understand everything. <laughs> you know, what's you, happening. <laughs> you know, the thing though, like I tried my best to watch and have, uh, YouTube translate. Oh my gosh. It does crazy stuff when, uh, I'm like watching and it just makes up words sometimes. I'm like, that's, I'm pretty sure that he didn't say that, you know, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> Yeah. Like, I, I don't think that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't seem right at all. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, here, let's back this up just a bit. Boom. All right. I'd like to try to get the knuckles of the hands in there. I think he has like three fingers. Yeah. 
Mike, do you like uh, characters with like just like odd numbers of appendages, like three fingers versus four fingers and a thumb? Do I? Reference? Yeah. Do you like characters? Now you're, now you're speaking my language, bro. Listen, <laughs> the less fingers I have to sculpt, the better. So yes, three fingers, two fingers. I'm all about that life. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You know what I want to do though, for real? Like I want to do a um I want to do like a a a, a Goro type of a character that has four arms. Oh, there you go. You know, there's this lady in uh, the Marvel universe and the X-Men thing named Siren that has uh four arms and I've always wanted to sculpt her. Yeah, so, there you go. You should do it. I'm going to copy and paste. I'm not doing double the work. Just gonna copy and paste those <laughs> Don't tell yeah, me. No. I won't. Your secret's safe with me. Thanks, man. No problem. I got you. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. I, a character with forearms. Goro has been on my wish list as well because of the forearms. Yeah. But then, yeah. there, there, I, I don't know. Maybe it's just like me second guessing myself. But mm -hmm. I'm always like, okay, yeah. But I think I'd be way too hyper focused on the believability of four scapulas for, you yeah. know, for yeah. ball and socket joints coming into the rib cage. Like how is that even possible? Yeah. Like <laughs> I saw someone block that out and I looked at it and it looks so weird, man. But I mean I guess it could be done. You know that I've seen I saw somebody just do one recently on um on IG and it was fantastic. So yeah. You know, you just got to suspend, suspend disbelief is what the kids say. Never. <laughs> suspend disbelief. <laughs> yes, exactly. I love it. Yep. No, you got to, you got to. <laughs> That's, thanks, man. It's going to be a, our new thing I, here. <laughs> you, you guys didn't know I'm a wordsmith, but I actually am. I'm very good with the words. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. All right, before we get too fancy dancy here, I'm going to go ahead and, like, I already got a Cyclops folder. We're going to go Cyclops. Wow. Can't spell the day. It's perfect. Uh, call this the base. Perfect. Perfect. All right. And what's cool, and this is why I like starting from Z spheres, because I can already catch the fact that. I'm off of my proportions a little bit here from what I want to see. Mm -hmm. So I can kind of start bringing the stuff in. Now for this guy, does he actually have four fingers? Or this is a, just like a, a design decision you decided to make? Um, he actually, in the game, he actually has uh, three fingers and a thumb. Yeah. So three and a thumb. Yeah, okay. I, yeah, so I, I'm trying to honor that decision as much as possible, um, mm -hmm. and just make that make that a little bit more towards it. Also, too, what's cool about this is like it lets me like actually um, study a little bit of Greek mythology, which is one of my favorite history topics mm -hmm. that I know almost nothing about. <laughs> <It's> like the <laughs> idea of all of it is awesome. So yeah. for me, this I get to. When I'm sculpting by myself and I'm not streaming or in, and I'm not listening to music, I'm usually either watching uh, like documentaries on on the topic or listening to the game being played in the background. Um, mm -hmm. Or sometimes I'll just zone out on a random TV show. Right. Yeah, B, I, I did mean Spiral. He, a, uh, he has a question for you. Show on screen. Sure. Scream? Stream? Okay, I'm going to stop. Ian, you just talk for the whole rest of the thing. I... <laughs> Apparently forgot the English language between my show and yours. Yeah. All right. Yeah. What, what does he say? What does he say here? Uh, Ian, will you be doing the sculpt and pose as in posing all three characters first a mannequin, then posing, sculpting, or pose in a pose, and then move them? Awesome question. So I'm going to be doing everything in an A pose to start it off to get it as close to what I want as possible. You can see here I have my other character up for an, a reference so that way I have an idea of how far I took the first piece, which isn't that far actually. It's just enough information to tell me where everything needs to be and how the character should look and feel. 
But ultimately, once I'm done having all three characters roughly around the same level of quality, that's when I will try out different poses, give it a shot. And then once I'm happy with the pose, then that's when we really start hammering in. So I figured the first few streams, while I'll be working on this in the background as well. So, I'm, you know, so every time I have an update and I come here to stream, then I'll basically update everybody with the approach that I, I take. But I figure starting it off here would be really good. Nice. All right. And then... Uh... Let's see, Manuel is asking, is, is there a way to scale the entire Z-Sphere skeleton? So the entire Z-Sphere skeleton, um, if I remember right, no, you're scaling one at a time. But it's going to be really easy to just, like if I switch over here to my preview, then scale, it's going to want to snap it back to the original or make changes. But when it's asking to make changes, i.e. accept that as change, it's going to want to make an actual mesh. So no, um, so I will say no discard, and it's going to put it in. Here, it's just really good to be able to um, to re to scale and move around each individual piece. But I'm not using this to try to get it perfect, just close enough. Like I'm pretty much happy where where things are right now. So we're already at the point where I'm just going to be getting a mesh and then just shaping it. Think of this as my armature. It's not really super important what this looks like or how big or small something is. It's really about just does it give me the overall base to start from that I'm going to be manipulating anyway. So, but to answer your question, no. Okay, cool. So at this point now, yeah, that's actually what I'm going to do. I'm going to go adaptive size and just preview this. This looks pretty good. This is Dynamesh, which is totally fine. And you can drop the density down to say something really low. Um, yeah, that's that's good enough for government work. Boom. And now <laughs> I have my skin right here. And now this is this right here is now sculptable, right? So I can start playing with this mesh. So this is where I'm going to go ahead. And I saved my first one as Cyclops base. So I'm going to save that and keep that Z sphere block out. But now I'm going to call this my Cyclops block out. And then we're going to go underscore zero uh, block out underscore zero zero one. And there we go. And really what I'm looking for, like I said, is just the overall idea of how this is supposed to look. I don't really care too much about about um, all the details because we're just going to rip right into this, starting randomly with the hands. <laughs> Flatten that palm a bit. Let's actually get alpha 18. And now we're just going to start blocking in some muscles, starting with the lats here. Now, partly two, just just because I like to explain what I do. Um, I left a big space here between the arms and what will be the chest in the back. And the reason why is just because I didn't want any colliding meshes. And what I mean by that is if I switch back here and I grab this piece and maybe move this really, really close, which also that could be kind of fun too. Now that I see it, I'm like, oh, that's kind of neat. Sometimes if you get too big though, you see what happens is that this kind of this uh, uh, almost anti-aliasing thing shows up. And when you see this, that means that you're actually too close to what's going on. Although this actually looks a lot cooler now that I made that change. So, hey, that's okay, right? So we'll just save that. And then we'll do the same thing. We'll come in here, adaptive skin. Just go ahead and make adaptive skin. And then, oh, you know what? I'll overwrite the other one. This one's cooler. Boom, done. Beauty hey, is you know, in the biz, we call those happy accidents. Yeah. <laughs> happy little <laughs> accidents. I love it. <laughs> All right. Let's get in here. What's cool about the Cyclops character is they have like a hunchback. So notice I haven't really put much of a head in here yet. And that's just because um, we'll, be, we'll be adding that in afterwards. I just really focused on the body right now.
this is basically concept arting now. Now we're just kind of coming in and playing with stuff and things. You can also, and this is kind of cool, you can also start drawing out parts of the anatomy that we'd like to focus on a little bit. Just get a general idea of where things should be. He's a big boy and he has some he has some chunky parts. He's thick. I love it. <laughs> so it's also why I like these characters. I used to sculpt I've sculpted like for most of my career, I sculpted like thin fit characters. Now I'm like, yeah. I, I wanna I wanna get into some some bigger characters, not just always mm -hmm. muscle bound. This is always my favorite part, what you're doing right now. Yeah, sculpting. Yeah, yeah, the, the anatomy block. Yeah, I love the block out face. I think a lot of I think a lot of artists love the block out face, if I'm being honest. Mm -hmm. You just get to rip into it, you know? Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Let's get some information right here. Bada boom. Do you know who's like um when I was first learning ZBrush, the person who tripped me out the most was Steve Lord. Watching oh him my gosh. work. Wow. Yeah. yeah. His his anatomy is sick, man. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember watching crazy. one of his I remember watching one of his uh, uh ZBrush live presentation uh at the summit. Like this was like, oh man, I think it was like 2020 was one of the mm -hmm. ones I really fell in love with. And he's like, had mm -hmm. this like cookie cutter show. And he was like, yeah, so I did this, I did that. And that took me here. And then I did this and now this is okay. And it's like really amazing. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm like that's okay yeah. to you. Eh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is okay. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever, have you ever met Steve at any of the, uh, the Pixelogics or the Maxon stuff? Uh, no, I have not had the pleasure, but would super love to. Yeah. Find the rib cage. Lats pulled in here. My stage is very, very messy in the beginning, but I love that. Absolutely. Fun brush that I like to use too is the Move Infinite. Especially for stages like this, where I'm like now pulling in parts of the leg, because then it's just pulling all of that in the background, so it stays pretty uniform in the beginning. That's become one of my favorite brushes, truth be told. Has it? Yeah. 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 Dude, I found this brush about. Mm, I want to say I found it about five years ago. So when I first discovered it, yeah, life changing, life changing moment. Okay. Yeah. So right now, having some interesting proportion decisions. I'm gonna scale that down just a little bit. And I'm using this reference too, so check this out. So here's my reference on one of the God of one of the Cyclopses. A uh, little bit more. I think this one is God of War three. Mm -hmm. This one might be God of War three as well. Same thing. Here's God of War three. So God of War three is what we're pulling from. And then here's my skeleton sketch that I saw a uh, a vector stock, just like somebody did a quick sketch, which is neat. I like to try to grab some skull anatomy if at all possible and since cyclopses yeah. aren't their fantasy right but also too there's you know there are some unique stories of actual cyclopses so there are some really good renders of people's ideas of what the skeleton would look like which should be pretty neat so using that as reference and just looking at this guy right now and he's wearing sandals so <laughs> that's kind of fun It's funny because that's how uh, a lot of us feel when we watch you guys.
This is the mash it around until it starts to look good. Sir. And I'm going to go. And so this is the cool part, too, is that I like to kind of take shapes um and play with that so like i i think i want to make him a little bit more of a pear-shaped type character i'd like to put my own spin on things so i'll probably make him a little bit wider down at the bottom than even what is uh even what's on the actual reference and just kind of start making it my own a bit Let me know if you need more reference. I can uh, take some quick shots and send them over to you. <laughs> no. <laughs> the, the, the pear shape is that's that's where I'm living right now, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, you, you and me both, man. Yeah, sitting down all day long will do that. <laughs> this is true. That's okay, dude. I I started actually. Um, I got. Um, which I'm gonna call it a standing desk now. So this, um, I can position it. it. Has hydraulics on it, so I'm yeah. finding myself standing up more and more as the days mm -hmm. go go by. And I'm, dude, lifesaver, I'm telling you. I'm gonna let you in on a secret, Ian. This is a standing yeah. desk, and I'm sitting down. So <laughs> <laughs> they should have you. You know how like the Apple stuff always tells you, hey, you should stand up and move around. Now they they should kind of link that up with a desk so that uh -huh. whether you like it or not, it just rises up and will stay there for a certain amount of time. Yeah. Just got to deal with it. <laughs> Let's do it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Real quick here. Let's do this. I'm going to go to real quickly uh, make a head shape of sort. Dynamesh that real fast. We're going to start pretty low. That's not low enough. Boom. There we go. All right. And then I'm just going to real fast somewhere about here. Just pop a hole. There you go. Done. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Looks just like them, dude. <laughs> all right <laughs> now we get to we get to enter the world of the tiny head club look at this cyclopses have like they are so funky dude this helps me figure out the neck I'm going to go ahead and group this such, and then I'm just going to do a really nasty dynamesh with groups. There we go. And you see uh, B is saying, check out the mammoth skulls. Check out the mammoth skulls. Ancient Greece. Ooh, nice. Thought they were Cyclops skulls, hence the stories of one-eyed monsters. If you remember right. Nice, man. I will definitely check that out. Yeah, dude, what's what's crazy to me, like the rabbit holes I like to go down, especially with fantasy characters are dragons. I feel like that's a very cool rabbit hole because so many cultures have their own stories and stuff. And you're just like, man, how did everybody have a story of a dragon? <laughs> All right. Let's get into the legs a bit. Because they're nasty.
But Mike, man, how has the uh, New Year been treating you? Pretty shabby, you know. Um, we got uh, we got some snow here the other day, so I don't love oh. that. But it wasn't that much. I'm not a fan of snow, yeah. so no, I, I, uh, I just don't. Well, I don't even know what snow is, so you have that. <laughs> <laughs> have you been on the West Coast your whole life? For the most part, yeah. There was a small... Okay, this, this is pretty funny, actually. You'll, you'll dig this one. There was a small <laughs> little window back in 2005 when I actually moved in with a buddy of mine uh, in North Carolina. And I had never really been to uh, too many places um, out, you know, outside of California. I just never had the opportunity. And first, first like winter there right uh yeah. there's a there's like a walgreens down the street i'm from california so i got t-shirt you know jeans sometimes shorts you know just no jacket a, a sweater that doesn't mm -hmm. even count as a sweater and mm -hmm. i'm like hey you know what i'm gonna need some supplies from the walgreens and it's starting to the sun's going down and my buddy's wife at the time says you know you should um you should really grab a jacket Cause you're going to walk. Mm -hmm. And I was like, right. nah, it's fine. I'll be gone. Like what? Maybe an hour, hour mm -hmm. best. Right. And I'm not worried about it. She's like, you sure. She's like, I'm recommending it. And I'm like, eh, it's fine. I'll be fine. You know, I, I, I knew everything. So I said, no, nah, don't worry about it. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so get down to Walgreens. Everything's fine. Start grabbing my stuff. And by the time I get out of the Walgreens, which maybe I was there, like, dude, like maybe 20 minutes tops, I walk yeah. outside and it is freezing. Now it's not snowing, yeah. it's not icy, but it is cold. And it's like yeah. a mile and a half walk. By the time mm -hmm. I get back to the house, my hands, no joke, they're frozen stiff. I'm barely holding onto the bag. I'm shivering because it went from like what was a nice 60, 65 degrees to yeah. 30 real fast. <laughs> and where were you? I was in Charlotte, North Carolina. Oh, dude. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. 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 So I was like, um, oh, man, it was nasty, dude. It was so oh, bad. And so, of course, she gets back. She already had the fire going. And she said, mm -hmm. she's like, just stay here. She's like, I'm surprised you made it back without calling. I'm like, no, no, no. I, <laughs> <laughs> I was I was too, uh, you know, what, what's the word? Um, I was too. Prideful? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> With one. hypothermia. There you go. Yep, yep. Yeah. I die for my beliefs, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, it was so crazy, man. Ah, what nice. an idiot. <laughs> hey, man. You, you didn't know any better. You're from that, that warm weather. Yeah, I sure was. Yep. Now I understand where I'm from. Mm -hmm. And I've only seen snow a couple times in my life. And one of them, I got a major concussion when I did it. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, Would you slip? Oh, I, got, uh, I was snowboarding. <laughs> Went up to uh, Big Bear. I was like, I was eight. I have a lot of I was eighteen stories. <laughs> I was uh, eighteen and dumb, and uh, uh, went snowboarding with a buddy of mine. And I used to skateboard as a kid, so I was like, yeah, yeah, this will be fun. Like, let's go. So never been snowboarding. Buddy takes me down on like a rent a board, and I barely got the hang of it. So the next words out of my mouth after we got down to the bottom was, do you want to race? And he was like, he was like okay, sure, let's race. <laughs> so we get back at the top. You know, that was an easy slope. You know, we get back up to the top. We start racing down it. And he's whooping my ass because he snowboards. Like, that's kind of his thing. Well, I, I can't have that. So I decide to just turn myself into a bullet. And I just straight line it down <laughs> just down the mountain, down the mountain. and i pass yeah. him i pass yeah. like five other people, five people. and then i realize then i gotta realize. stop so from that you know, moment i go to go slide to my board, board so you know so, yeah. uh, uh leaning backwards a little bit and then my toes curled in a way because i have big feet and the board was slightly smaller than it should have been uh for my size so i curled my toes which sent me forward and i face plant got up spun around face plant and i did that about three times and then I landed okay. on my back, and this this, this girl slides by, sits down next to me. She's like, "You just 
stay there for a second. You'll be fine. <laughs> Ended up having a major concussion and uh, well, minor concussion, not major. It's more like I was puking and throwing up and just not having good feelings for the rest of the night. And I had to stay awake because I knew because my eyes were not dilating. It was crazy. But dude, that knocked the sails out of me. It was wild. Yikes. My headphones went out on me. Let me know if I'm echoing too bad and I'll figure something out. Let's see, test, test, test. I can barely hear it. I'll let you know if it goes. Plus, the chat can hear it. But you sound good to me, man. How did the snow taste? <laughs> when artist asked. Uh, well, it was man-made snow. So, which, as I understand it, is basically extremely hard in comparison to regular snow. So, yeah. <laughs> was not fresh powder. Hmm. Honestly, I, I don't... Only thing I remember is just going to my girlfriend's house at the time, just going there. A buddy of mine, I was like, we got to call my parents because I was 18. I was like, I'll call my parents, let them know. I'm just staying at your house. I'm not going to tell them that I ate total shit. Like, <laughs> Again, that pride, man, that pride. Mm. We went snowboarding with my kids one time and, uh, realized that it was not for me um I, i've skied before i'm art i'm pretty good at skiing but uh yeah the snowboarding thing i was like oh this looks like it'd be much more fun i'm gonna be great at this and uh ended up tumbling on this hill and dislocating my shoulder but i didn't know it was dislocated at the time but we were with a instructor and my son was just like Hey, uh, can we just leave my dad? And and he's like, uh, you know, we're not gonna leave your dad. Thanks, man. Thank you. <laughs> I'm gonna leave my son here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. Oh yeah, that's pretty crazy of him to think about that though. How old was your son at the time? Old enough to know better. That's how old he that's was. Good. That's good. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. 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 Should have known better. Um, no, I mean, he was like I don't know, 10 or 12, something like that. My 12 year old son would have been oblivious. <laughs> yeah, my, mine kind of was. I, I can't get mad at him, but you don't have to say it out loud, I guess, is my point. Yeah, I think that yeah. I'll say it out loud. Give him some flat feet down here at the bottom. All right, he has super big feet too, so we're just gonna we're gonna go nuts here. All right, let's turn on local sim. I'm gonna scale this up. And this is also going to help me adjust his legs a bit because I'm finding myself adjusting towards the current size of his feet, which are nothing. And he's a big boy, so we got to go big. Give him some. He's not going to have ankles, I've decided. Can have what do they call it? Kankles originally is that the mm. nickname? Mean. <laughs> Gonna disappear. Yeah, get some of that. Mm 
Awesome. All right, let's go ahead and reshape this. And how long are you streaming tonight? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> I always I blocked I blocked out a minimum of two hours. So yeah, two maybe three at the latest. Okay, I, I I definitely wanted to be in here for the first hour. Um, I think I got to do some stuff in the house. Um, but. I'll hang out for like another half or so. Thanks for being here, buddy. Thanks for having me, brother. And thanks for being on the Stylus League. It, I'm so excited. Heck yeah. yeah. He and I have That's been friends for uh, for a while now, so this is uh, this is pretty cool. Oh yeah, man. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's been awesome, dude. dude. So you got any fun jobs you're allowed to talk about coming up? I'm trying to get a job. I've <laughs> actually, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm out on the market, um, so I can't talk about it. But I'm, I'm in the midst of. Uh, I've been freelancing since 2003, man. So, 2004. So 20 years I've been freelancing, and. Uh, and now I'm throwing my hat into the uh, back into the the workforce uh, again. So it's, it's exciting and new. Oh yeah, that's a long time to be freelancing, man. A long time. I did not expect to uh, to be able to make it that long, but good. It's fun. Yeah, man. I remember when COVID happened, I remember like getting really nervous because I, I was, I had freelance before, but not in this industry. I had freelance as a wedding photographer. Um, so I understood the freelance game, but when, when everything started shutting down, I was like panicking because I was like just trying to get into the industry. Anybody to look at me, I was like, look at me, please. I'm, I can do this. <laughs> yeah. just scared out of my mind. Of my mind. And so I was like, great, I'm forced to freelance in an industry I don't know nothing about. <laughs> hey, man. Sink or swim. That's it, man. Actually, that's what I'm grateful this. for. You did it. You I did it. it. I know, man. That's crazy, dude. Yeah. I know. Definitely. I think that really helped me out, the sink or swim part. You know? Yeah. The economy got weird. You know, like the the uh, the AI thing was was problematic for you know, like illustration was my main gig for a while, uh, and by a while I mean like that was my main deal. So, um, just stuff started getting crazy. I have a lot of friends in the industry who had to kind of reassess, you know. Mid journey is dope, but it's also it's also you know making people take stock. Did I lose my speaker again? Ian, are you talking to me and I can't hear you? No, no, no. I was no, listening. No, no. I was listening. Okay. I do that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is not that important. You don't have to be that riveted. I know, man. I love I love chat. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember when uh, NFTs first made their debut. Remember some? Remember so many people were like scamming the hire. Me, you know, I'll hire you to do an NFT, and you get all those royalties. You know, right. and I was like, mm -mm. Mm -mm. not 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 biting. That was another one of those things that was like, if you got it on the ground floor, I know people that made money with it. 
fell out. Not like a popularity contest, if I'm going to be honest. Yeah, it was. It definitely was. Yeah. Do you still have... I still have people hit me up and they're like, oh, I want to buy your stuff as NFTs and... You know, Dude, I'll so send you much. some Ethereum. I'm like, mm, that's okay. That's all right. Yeah. Sounds like a scam to me. It happens way more than I want to admit, actually. Yeah. To the point where, like, there are, there are, like, tons of just DMs I haven't even read. And then every once in a while, a real person will hit me up and be like, hey, I sent you a message on Instagram. I don't know if you got it. And I was like, right. let me go check, man. I probably ignored it with the other ridiculous stuff, too. My bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But you never know. It could be a scam. Uh, Sparky switch into lurk mode. Thanks, Sparky. <laughs> what up, Leonard? How you doing, buddy? How about you? Are you working on anything cool that you can talk about? Um, I could talk about. I know, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on some cool stuff. Some cool stuff. Nice. Can't talk about it. Can't talk about it. But we, but we did announce yeah. that we are doing zebra yeah. fry bed. Just Dude. saying. I know. <laughs> I can't wait. Yep. Very excited about that. Yeah. Yeah, man. Me too. You know, Bradley sent me a link to this. Uh, what's it called? Cozy Blanket. Do you ever mess with that? Uh, I played with the beta a little bit, but I haven't picked it up full time. So for it's folks cool. who don't know what it is, you can work on your UVs. Not UVs. Your... Uh, is it UVs? Or, no, we... Um, Read topology, right? Yeah. And on your iPad. So you could literally take that Cyclops, you know, bring the OBJ into your uh, iPad as a, you know, uh, and then and then go ahead and start working on uh, a clean mesh if you wanted to, which is pretty dope. You know, yeah. It's just the, the concept's okay. really cool. I just haven't really like I played with the beta and I know there was like was it like a frog or something he had in there and yeah it was pretty intuitive I was pretty happy about it. Now I messed around with it a while ago and I was like it's cool but it, it there were some things that I didn't I wasn't quite there. I think uh Bradley was saying that they've come out with a new version that's a lot um it's it's even more you know uh useful. So oh, cool. You sit on the couch and work on your uh, topology. Watching TV. When you're watching yeah, 90 Day Fiance, like me. <laughs> <laughs> you know that, that like show a... that I love. Really. <laughs> the first time I'm hearing about <laughs> it. <laughs> Dude, listen, we make we make concessions. We make concessions. If that's if that's the the most that I have to do, I will watch. Married at first sight and not a day fiance and all that other stuff. Small, small thing to, to do. You know what? The more I think about it, I realize there is a project that I can talk about. Um, do you know John Brown, the Noman sculptor? Oh, yeah, he's awesome. Dude, yeah. So yeah, he, yeah. so he taught me traditional uh, sculpture last year, which mm -hmm. is really fun. But okay. he's working on a film, and I'm helping with uh, 3D printing the props for him. Oh, that's cool, man. So that's pretty cool. But my printer is, was acting up a lot today. I was working with uh, Tenacious. Uh, I always want to say Tenacious D. Yeah, I wanted to say it so bad <laughs> to stop myself. <laughs> Yeah, I'm playing yeah, with I'm tenacious, playing tenacious uh, material because it's supposed to be very flexible. Very flexible. Um, okay. So I tried a little bit of that, but I had a couple failures. And the big printer that I have, which is a 
Apex Maker X1. Big boy uh -huh. printer. It's massive. Um, for some reason, my parts are starting to fail. The support, I'm getting like partial support failure. So I need to I need to figure out what's going on with that. But oh, wait, is Tenacious a, a slicing software? No, Tenacious is a type of material that is like um it's like rubber like. So it's it's you can a lot of people buy tenacious, which is like sixty-five, seventy dollars for a bottle, but they mix it with their other like ABS style resin, and this gives that resin less uh, brittleness and more um, durability. So if you drop it, it doesn't shatter like glass. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. But I was trying to print it as is without mixing it because the piece that we're doing is actually a uh, face mask, which here, I can actually give a visual on that. Let me save this crazy block out here and I can load it. Now, where is it? Face mask. Desktops. Here we go. So check this out. And it's cool because I actually printed out a life-size scan of her, of her body, which was really cool of the, of the main actress. But here is um, the model that was actually designed by uh, what is his name? I want to credit him correctly. Do 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 do. His name is Colin. Let me see real fast. I'll pull up his name real quick. Let's see. Colin Swins Swinson, really okay. awesome dude. Anyway, and so this part right here is going to go up against her face. So put her scan in here real quick. So this is going to go up against her. Uh, and so we cut in some holes so then she can breathe and they'll add some straps and stuff, of course, to hold on to it. But this part right here, because it's going to go up against her face, I recommend it. I was like, well, let me see about Tenacious because since it's flexible, it'll be a little bit more forgiving and it won't just feel like a piece of hard plastic upon her face as she's wearing it. Right. And so, yeah, so I cut some holes into it and then this part got this, uh, got approved for the design and then keyed this section so then we can print it in those pieces. But as soon as I get this piece fixed, I'm like, okay, here we go. Let's print it. Failure, failure, failure. And I'm like, okay. So, Are you printing that all as one piece or is it multiple pieces that fit together? It's multiple pieces fit together. So it's one, two, three, four, five. It's five pieces in total. It's going to be cool. It's done, man. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. So if I can print this whole piece in that tenacious, then it'll be really lightweight and flexible. So then she could just fit it. And then these pieces right here will be done in like uh, the ABS like resin with a little bit of tenacious. So then it has more durability since she's going to be handling this a lot. And then they can go through and do like a paint job, mask off this area here. So then there's no paint on her face um, and it'll be, it'll look really nice. It's awesome, dude. Yeah. So yeah, that's the yeah, that that's, that's that, that. I almost forgot about that project. <laughs> so, so did you uh, kind of hook up with him through Nomen, or that was something that that happened some other way? So um, I hooked up with John through Nomen. I actually, when I first started working at uh, at Maxon, um, he's just right downstairs. And so Paul introduced me to him and, you know, just got talking to him naturally through just being there. And then I told him, I was like, hey, I've always wanted to take a sculpture class and see if my zebra skills transfer to actual clay. And he was like, oh, dude, yeah. He's like, anytime you want to take my class, let me know. Um, and if there's room, I'll fit you in. So um, I was able to uh, get signed up. And then during that process, him and I just started talking a lot and we hit it off. And then he was like, hey, then he knew I knew a lot about 3D printing and other stuff. So he was like, hey, I, I need some like props printed for my movie that I'm working on. Would you be interested in helping me out? And I was like, hell yeah, that sounds awesome. So it's right. very cool, man. That sculpt room and and Nomen is just insane. Like, I, I, I was so impressed when I walked through it. I was just like, I just want to take all this stuff 
and put it in my office? Can I just take some of it home? And Paul said no. So, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Have, have I shown you my sculpture? Let me see. Yeah, yeah. Let me go get it. It's right over here. Yeah, I'll switch to uh, full screen. So let's do this. Switch. Oh, actually, I just need to blow. You just click on you, right? Yeah, just. There we go. Okay, one second. Okay. It's cool because this thing's like 22 inches in total height. Uh, nice little Akuma action. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Still work in progress at this point. He's freaking heavy though, man. What but is that? Is that uh is that Chavant? It is, yeah. It's yeah. Chavant uh medium. Nice. Yeah. Do you guys also, ever play around with monster clay? I have not. Um John prefers this medium, which is why he starts with it. He also says it's very friendly. Uh, like uh, beginner friendly, beginner friendly. But, yeah. but a lot of people are telling me monster clay is very uh beginner friendly as well but yeah, yeah. that's the back side of it so yeah, yeah dude i think this thing weighs like eight pounds already it's heavy as hell dude yeah yeah that's awesome you get a lot of compliments over here thanks thanks just put that back i need to finish it i need to finish his feet and then smooth out the muscle details but what's fun is that like i can just pick it back up whenever i want so it's kind of nice i have a question for you sure i love sculpting with monster clay i do not enjoy um making the uh the armatures only because I I always try to reinvent the wheel when I make my armature. Do you have like the 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 pipe numbers or whatever? Like go get this pipe, you know, go get a number four, you know, elbow joint, get this thing and put it together because that would save me a lot of time. I would just get the things I need, build it, and then my guys wouldn't fall over nine times out of ten. You know, what's funny is um, he gave us a kit um, that I can link you to that has all that information on there. But when I went and bought that kit, I just saved all of those sleeves on what it was. So I didn't have to think about it for next time. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, 100% agree. Like it's having that information is just super crucial. So I can send you that stuff, too. Thanks, brother. Yeah, that's my thing. Like, I, I want to jump right into the fun part without doing the part that you absolutely have to do first. And then I find I run into problems every time. Yeah, but that's the fun part, right? How come it's not like ZBrush, where I don't have to worry about the model kind of like bending and falling over from its own weight? <laughs> Real life is weird. It's just not how it works, man. It's not how it works. <laughs> yeah i know actually it was funny because in that class um a lot of the people figured out where i work just through having normal conversation because i was in saying there's like 10 of us and so a lot of those kids were there um, at Noman trying to you know they're there to try to get careers and stuff and it was it was so cool because every once in a while they would hear me be like ah, damn Whoops. Okay, undo that. <laughs> they would just be like, "You can't control, can't control Z that." <laughs> You're right. Stop. Nah. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> First few times it was like really funny. After a while, I just like glanced over. I'm like, really? <laughs> yeah, sure. Sure. But it was all in good fun. The stage of just like ripping this character up and just reshaping is so much fun. I love characters like this because they just let you do whatever the hell you want. I've been doing more creature stuff, you know? Like, I don't think I've, I've only done it for Stylus League. 
And uh, but the stuff I did, I had fun with, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually, the dude I did for Nomen was like a the squid head guy. Um, Ooh, he had like an octopus yeah. on top of his head, and he's riding on this mollusk, like um, or nautilus or whatever it was. But uh, that was fun, man. I was like, yeah, I want to do more creatures now. Yeah, I, I tend to lean into creatures when I'm tired of sculpting a human for a little bit. Mm -hmm. so I feel like sometimes I burn myself yeah, out so with the same, old yeah. the same old start, the same old, same old, same old. Sure. Good news is you do it long enough. Uh, somebody you said... to get oh, go ahead. I'm not saying the good news is you do it long enough, you have no choice but to get better at it. So exactly. we got that yep. going for us. Oh, 100 percent Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Let's see here. Uh got a few questions, which is awesome. Manuel says, I'd love to take that John Brown class. How long was that class? So the class was three hours in total once a week for 10 weeks. And it's amazing because everybody who took that class told me, okay, no matter how good at anatomy you are, you're going to get better just naturally because of the way John teaches. And I was like, okay, great. That's good to know. First day of class, John comes up and he was like, okay, guys, I don't, you know, just want to let you guys know we're going to be doing a lot of fun stuff. We're going to be learning a lot about engineering, modeling, some design, blah, 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 blah. He's like, notice I didn't say anatomy in this class. Anatomy here is a four-letter word. We don't do that. And I'm like, everybody said my anatomy went and proven this class. <laughs> and right. he just straight called out. But then sure enough, as we're going through the class and the things he's calling out and the way he teaches, immediately I was like, this, oh my God, okay. He's not teaching it directly. He, te he teaches it in almost the most indirect approach that directly affects the way you think about anatomy. Okay. And it's fascinating. And I was like, dude, this is so, so crazy. And then later, you know, but he'll say like, you know, it's like, look, anatomy is super important. Don't get me wrong. He's like, it's just the way in which you think about it, the way you are designing and sculpting all of that. The choices you make is what matters in the beginning. And so it was just super cool to hear his whole take and process on it. It really changed this, the way I look at it, even the way I ZBrush. So he Mr. Miyagi you. He really did, man. <laughs> nice. Yeah, so highly recommend it. if you could take his class, do it. Love to take his class. I would love to take an Andrew Carr's class. Those two guys. Check out the chat real quick. What's with YouTube going to commercials? I don't know. I don't know. Uh oh, I'm the. You only paid for that, so that's not good. Ian, have you seen uh, Godzilla minus uh, minus one minus? Is it minus one? I think it's minus right. one. No, oh, damn no. it! That was on my list to see, and I completely forgot. To <laughs> oh my gosh! That. If if you can see it, you gotta see it. It is dope. It's out in theaters, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and and I will a hundred percent be buying it day one when it's on like home digital or whatever. Really that good, huh? Yeah, you know what it is? It's like, uh, and they didn't spend like an awful lot of money on it, but the way that they did Godzilla, he wasn't, you know, like the hero or the anti-hero. He's kind of just an asshole. You know what I mean? 
Um, yeah. But like a really powerful one. Like <laughs> just incredibly <laughs> overpowered. It's crazy and, and quite scary. So I was like, yeah, I, I need more of this. Okay. Okay. Nice. Nice. I dig it, man. I dig it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it's been on my list. I've been meaning to watch it. And yet for some reason, uh, every time I sit down and say, Hey, I should watch something. It completely slips my mind. Yeah. Hey, uh, the one 3d artist is asking, do you have to live in California to take those, take those classes? Uh, so, I think he has um I think he has it on online. I think you can take it online. Check out uh the Nomen workshop. And he has uh you could pay for you can get that class. I I don't know how expensive or how about what the price is of it, but you can you can definitely do it there. Because he actually, I remember him referencing in his classroom, he was like, hey, if you want, if everything I say in this next three hours, you'll lose yourself. He's like, just go and rewatch that or send me an email and I'll answer your questions. He's like, but a lot of that stuff's online. And the Nomen Workshop is its own subscription that you can do a ton of really good Nomen courses for like, I think it's like 500 bucks for the year. It's like really valuable, uh, affordable too for what you're getting. So, well, they have some great, uh, some great tutorials there, classes that you can take. But yeah, but to take his class in person, yeah, you have to be in California. <laughs> Leonard says, great description of Godzilla. <laughs> you know what? It's, uh, yeah. It's, there's too many times they try to make him look like, you know, he's the good guy. He's not the good guy. Bad guy. Any other movies you recommend? Uh, movies. I went and I saw Mean Girls with my daughter. What's it? You know, it was fun. I like the original movie better, to be honest. Um, and I, I don't mind musicals as long as musicals yeah. move forward. Like, you're going to break out in song. Do me a favor. Progress the story through the song. So then we yeah. can get on with our lives. <laughs> older, older music. I, I think I was, I think I was hurt as a child uh, with certain music videos or mu uh, musicals that don't progress the story. That's like they stop, they sing the song for like five minutes, and then they go back to right where they picked up. And I'm like, bro, really? We could have chop chop, man. We could, we could have done something else. Uh, but you know, this one's actually was well done, but. I would say from what I've seen of the of the live musical Broadway performance, it's not the same in the movie. That's the only negative thing against it, you know, so because it's a, Broadway... it, I'm sorry, it, it is a musical. It is a musical. The new one's a musical. Yeah. The original movie's not. So if you're not into musicals, it's not for you, I would say. Um, it is not. Yeah. But. I, from what I've seen, people talk about the um, the Broadway perform uh, version. Like it's just so much better than this. But you know, you gotta you gotta really belt it from the rooftops when you're on Broadway. So yeah, I, yeah. I was watching something, and they just I found out that it was a musical like <laughs> very quickly, and it was like, mm, nope. Can't do that. Can't you know, I have you know to what? say it. Oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say I watched Barbie recently, though. And I got to say, even like through the, the musical bits of that, I was like, I kind of like this movie. I'm going to say yeah, it. I, yeah, I love Barbie. Yeah. 
It was so it was so colorful to look at. I was like, the colors in this are crazy. It's so saturated, you know. Yep. Yeah, it was really well done. I really enjoyed it. it says so the Iron Claw was dope. Awesome. The Iron Claw. What's that? Uh, uh that one 3D artist. Orkley, is that you? Is that is that your other name? Uh. <laughs> uh, John Brown is uh, John the sculptor's Brown. is uh, who you'd be looking for. If you want, actually, here. I think I can send you a link. I started watching uh, the new True Detective and kind of dig that. I I usually like those. I have not seen that. Is that like forensic files? Uh, kind of a drama thriller thing. Have you have you never seen any of them? No, no. Nope. This is season four, I think, four or five. And uh, the first one had McConaughey and uh, uh, the dude from Cheers. What's his name? That smokes a lot of weed. Willie, not Willie Nelson. What's his, what's his name? Woody Harrelson. Oh, yeah, he does. Doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's pretty good. Nice, pretty, nice. Pretty good. Okay, I'll have to check that. I did see the new Hunger Game uh, movie. Mm -hmm. That was fun, too, if you like Hunger Game. And the new Fargo was great. Just finished that. Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna do something kind of fun. So I need to reshape his T pose just a little bit. He's a little too upright for me. So I'm gonna go to geometry and proxy pose. We're gonna, gonna scale him down, something like this. Forward. Yeah, there we go. All right, so I'm just going to kind of come in here a little bit, reshape just a bit. All right. Let's see. There. That was. Yeah, okay. A little bit better. Nice. Let's see here, guys. Did you see Monarch? No, I have not. I've been watching it. I like it. Now, I have to be honest. I play a lot of Street Fighter if I'm not watching, if I'm not working. 
man, I try to, uh, I got my, my laptop hooked up to my new big, like Christmas present to myself TV. And, uh, it looks beautiful, but I started playing a game and I immediately felt bad that I wasn't working. <clears throat> so yeah. I was like, let me get something done, man. But the game is beautiful. Yeah, I, I've I've been trying not to feel bad while playing, especially when I'm getting my butt whoops. Yeah, <laughs> but I don't know. I think it's important to like take time. You know, it it just for me. I know that when I say okay, I'm gonna take time. I'll be there for like five hours, and it's like maybe not that much time. That's too much time, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Be a little obsessive sometimes. You earned it. Yeah, but you have that uh, that Steam Deck, right? I have it. I now ask me the last time I touched it or turned it on. Like I, I kind of knew that was going to happen. It's great. Don't get me wrong. Um, I just uh, I haven't played it. And I fired up uh, the new Dead Space, the Dead Space remake on um, on that TV, though. Oh, my gosh. I was like, this looks great. And then I went into the settings and realized that I didn't even have it at, like, max settings. And I got that thing <laughs> turned up. I was like, okay. <laughs> this is gross <laughs> and beautiful at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, that that space freaked me out a lot, and I loved it. I haven't played it in a long time. I mean, since the I don't think I played. No, I did play two, but I mean that's the last time the original Dead Space Two was the last time I picked it up. I think I played so cool. three for a little bit, but Go I never ahead. finished it. I think I played three for a little bit, but I never finished it. One I yeah. finished, two was good, um, but three I I think I started it and then I just I just I put it down for that random reason of not understanding why I did that, but I did. Yeah. For some reason lately, the only games I'm finishing are the Resident Evil games. So. Proof. <laughs> What'd you say? I approve that, man. I love Resident <laughs> Evil. Oh yeah, dude. I love the remakes. Actually, Resident Evil 4 remake was super good because they explained so many things that I wish they had explained in the first time. Like the first, like, you know, when they brought up Resident Evil 4 for the first time, that game was amazing. But um, there were like, as a, as a huge Resident Evil fan, I was like, I don't understand how Leon got to be a, a special agent super soldier or anything. Right, right, right. Oh, okay. right. So, <laughs> yes. so for you, <laughs> you got to so, suspend yeah. disbelief a little bit on that. How do you go from being some peon at the the Raccoon City Police Department to being like the guy that the president calls when his daughter gets kidnapped? Yeah, yeah, it made no sense to me. So, but I was like, okay, well, you know, he says he's a uh, he's he's super soldier, badass. Okay, great, I believe it. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so this this time around, have you have you played the remake of four? I have it and I started it. Um, I actually need to finish it. But uh, yeah, it's it's another one that I like. I just want to take my time with it. For some reason, like the Resident Evil games are the ones that I don't want any distractions. I just want to sit there and really enjoy it. But um, yeah, that's how I was with Village and. Um, I was gonna say, you know, the only one that I didn't really like was uh, the one. Uh, was it? I didn't play six. I heard six was like a like an action kind of a game. It um, was terrible, man. That you didn't like it. It was a whole different departure, right? Yeah, it was. Uh, no, no. It's, no. I, I I left, I left the Resident, Resident Evil franchise when franchise. when six came out. Came out. I was like yeah. I played it, played I beat it, it. Yeah. I returned it to GameStop. GameStop. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It doesn't exist for me. 
Like, wow. <laughs> and I remember Code Veronica in the beginning when that oh, first that game awesome. came out, kind of being yeah. like one of those things where I was like, okay, this is really good, but I don't know if it's canon, but I'm digging it. Yeah. But I was yeah. like, oh, I don't know. I was like so torn for liking it. Um, uh-huh. But then I remember so many people were like, no, Veronica's awesome. Uh, and then, but yeah, with six, uh, like that was one of the times I, I got it, I played it, I beat it, I returned it. And I told the buddy, I was like, dude, six sucks. And he's like, oh no, I understand. He's like, I couldn't, he's like, I couldn't even finish it. What about you? I'm like, no, I finished it. He's like, oh, you're brave. <laughs> I know, dude. So the, my friend, Jerry, the guy that does, uh, he does a uh, box cutter and hard ops. Um, he, that's his favorite Resident Evil. Like he was so crazy about that game. And I was like, really, man? He's like, oh yeah, no, it's the best one. I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't know, man. But uh, I tried it. I tried it. I was like, mm, yeah, I guess I'm just like a, an old school Res Evil head. But it's cool to see the, the what they're doing with the remakes because the, the, you could tell the team just is in love with it. Like everybody's doing well, so that's nice. Yeah. One of the scariest moments in Dead Space is getting cut in half by the spinning family. Yeah. 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 I'm not looking 3D. forward to seeing that in like full 4K resolution. Like I haven't gotten there yet. I mean, that's half the fun, though, right? Like, that's why we buy these games. It is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, uh, 3D Manic, if you're still here, thanks for stopping by, man. Go take that daughter to school. I get it. Blue Eyes Samurai is a good is good to watch, too. Nice. You know a show I actually started watching recently? Shout out to B, who recommended it. Solo Leveling. It's a new anime. I heard of that, about that. What, what's it on though? Is that a Crunchyroll thing, or is it on something like uh... Crunchyroll? It is Crunchyroll. Okay. Yeah, I think they have it on Hulu have... through the Crunchyroll thing. Crunchyroll. If you have that combo, okay. I think. Yeah. Dude, Blue Eye Samurai was amazing. I I marathon that thing, and was really happy with that. I mean, it was no 90 Day Fiance or anything, but it was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wondering if if my wife is listening to me. Why would you when they talk about 90 Day Fiance? Hey, man, don't get in trouble. <laughs> she wouldn't say that. <clears throat> she would just be a little hurt that I said it. I get that. I get that. It's like that... Uh, uh, was it those TikToks going around right now where it's like somebody's like, hey, uh, would you, would you peel? I want an orange, but I want to peel it and I'm waiting to see if their spouse would offer to peel it for them. <laughs> yeah. Did any of them ever peel the orange? It's funny. It's so divided. It, yeah, I'm calling it the orange drama on TikTok because, yeah, dude, there are people who are like, hell no, I'm not going to peel it. You can do it yourself. Right. Yeah, right, right. And then there are other people who are just like, of course I would do this. Um, there was one guy. Oh, this one hit my feet so hard. This one guy was like, if my wife ever asked me to do that, I would divorce her on the spot. She shouldn't be testing me. And I was like, oh my God, that escalated so fast. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, bro. <laughs> that is a, that's a, a weird place to draw your line in the sand, you know? Yeah, exactly. Like, wow, okay, cool. We went from can you peel an orange to divorce papers. <laughs> I'd be like, hey, listen, I, I want to do it. Let's just not make it a habit. You know what I mean? Like, I'll do it for you. <laughs> we'll get to the party. You're good. You good? Oh, man, was it? Hey, We've been going for an hour and a half. Nice. All right. So I got to the body to the point now too, where I'm going to start like kind of just deciding what his face is going to look like a little bit, and then, and then we'll 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 try to make some more decisions. 
see what happens. Let's actually clear that guy out. Let's put him kind of standing idly by here. And I'm just going to focus on the face for a minute. Find the skull. Get a little bit more resolution here. Yeah, that's fine. Cool. Just realized I have not saved once the whole time. Mm, you brave, sir. You are brave. <laughs> That was a mistake. Didn't mean to do that. I got comfortable. Look at my reference real quick. I just check myself before I wreck myself. So I promised I wouldn't do this to you, but I have to ask you a question. <laughs> uh, uh, it's it's just a quick one. I I reinstalled Windows and reinstalled ZBrush. And I have my uh, my type for my computer set to 150% on the 4K monitor. But in ZBrush, it's super duper small on here. And I wanted to know, is there a setting in here that I forgot about? Because I haven't messed with my UI in a long time that allows me to change the setting. Where is that? The size of the Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if you go up to you go your, your preferences, preferences. Uh -huh. and then you go under interface, interface yeah. and then you and then go to UI, okay. there's a button size. And that button size, you can actually increase or decrease the value of this. Okay. So for you, it, restart, you want, it, does it? it will ask it you to restart. It won't okay. take effect until your next restart. So you could change it now if you wanted to. So if you yeah. were to say like 52, they'll say, okay, mm -hmm. the UI will adjust the next time you start ZBrush. Um, Thank you so much. Yep. And then if you like that change, then you can go ahead and just save that and it'll be good. Awesome. Thank you, sir. See, just a quick one. Yeah, you're good. You're good. You're good. Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm trapped now. Trapped. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, Ian, about these, no. about these polygroup colors. Oh, yeah, you're breaking up. <laughs> now that you're a captive audience. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Listen, brother, um, I am going to dip out, but um, I, I appreciate you having me on for your first show. Thanks for being here, dude. Super awesome. Yeah. So, no, no, Chase, you're yeah. good. Mike, you're Mike's going to Mike's going to dip out, but I'm going to be here for a little bit longer. And I'm going to be hitting up uh, the rest of this uh, Cyclops block out. Yeah, thanks for joining me on my first stream, Mike. It's super awesome. Yeah, man. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, Ian's got three hours on me, so yes. I'm an old guy. I got to get ready for work tomorrow. Absolutely, man. Right. Well, enjoy Thanks, the rest Thanks, of your guys. Night. See you, Jamie. All right. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is a new thing. Good. I don't know how to get out of here. Okay, there it is right there. I'm sorry. <laughs> We're using something new here. Okay. All right. Peace, guys. Later, dude. You're all stuck with me now. <laughs> it didn't work. I'm still here. I'm still here. <laughs> Log out. Okay. I hate when I did that. All right. Uh, all right. Now. No, don't do right. that. Stop. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the broadcast is like, please end it before. Oh, no. Wait a minute. Right. No, 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 no. Why can't I leave? Just stuck here. I have to quit. Hmm. Thanks, Raul for making us use something that I've never used before for Ian's debut. Perfect. All right.
Oh, I know what to do. Okay, all right, see you. Peace. Okay, see you. <laughs> all right, all right. All right, so we're just going to continue doing this for a little bit more. Yeah, I, I planned the stream for about two, maybe between two to three hours. I didn't want to go too, too long, especially since it's Sunday and stuff like that. But yeah, I figured we'll get, uh, we'll get pretty far with this guy. All right. Bada bing, bada boom. All right, let's give him a little bit of a nose or indicator of a nose. It's cool because on the on the reference that I got going on here, what's fun is that like you have like a sliver of a nostril, which is super fun. And his eyes are like really, really wide. So we're gonna try to replicate that as close as possible. Nearly 4 a.m. here, but can't leave before the end despite an early start in the morning. <laughs> Dude, Jamie, I feel you, man. I, dude, like for me, like if I was up past, if I'm up past three in the morning, I don't go to bed. I, there's no way I could like sleep after that. It's just kind of like, that's there's there's it's just too much at that point, if you know what I mean. All right, let's get some eyes in here. So I'm actually going to bring up my. I am in primitive, and when you have that, when you have something like this set up, you can actually switch with the arrow key and pick something else. Now, it's really, really small because, there we go. It's really small because my scale is off. So here, we're just going to go ahead and put that in. And we're going to shrink this down and get this eye in a relatively decent spot. We could just turn this off here. I'll just get this in place well enough, close enough for what we're going for. There we go. Now I'm going to do one other thing, which is lift his head a little bit. It's a little too. It's a little too angled down, so let's raise it up. Do something a little bit more like that. There we go. Perfect. It's close enough. And let's hit save. <laughs> Beautiful. All right, let's get in here. Awesome. So when you love when your project is is, but hate how many parts you made for it, posing as a nightmare. Oh yeah, dude, a hundred percent, man. Be honest, like posing for me, it's a uh, it's definitely a love hate. I love it because your character comes to life, but yeah, sometimes you go to pose something, and immediately you're just regretting life decisions. Especially if you if you know for a fact it's just going to take a, a lot to get to a certain spot, but you're always I don't know for me I'm always happier for it once I do it. All right. And let's get this in there a little bit. Let's... Yeah, okay. Now I'm going to repurpose some parts. You might have noticed I've repurposed the foot as well. But let me see here. I have some teeth that I could definitely repurpose here. So I'm going to go ahead and actually going to merge these down boom perfect going to copy that and let's put this in here and let's just paste and then because we can't really see where they all went somewhere off screen oh there they are they're right there perfect let's bring this in use character creator to pose now nice 
Uh, hey, Ian, are you running a Threadripper? I'm not on my personal machine. Right now, I'm actually running... My personal computer is actually low specs. I'm probably due for an upgrade soon, but I'm running a Ryzen 5 CPU with 48 gigs of RAM, which is such a random number. I don't know how I got there, but 48 gigs of RAM and a 2080 GPU. I really can use an upgrade. <laughs> but ZBrush is running just fine. Everything I do runs pretty well. So no, no major complaints on that but yeah eventually it's going to let's do uh, you know i need these ones right here there we go mask these off now on my work computer i do run a uh, a thread ripper which is if you heard me say i run a thread ripper that's that's where I run it. There we go. All right. Got some teeth in here. That's also going to help me shape the mouth a little bit better. There we go. Do I ever experience wrist pains and fatigue after sculpting? Dude, dude, that's a great question. And yes, I have. And what I recommend you do with that is a stretches, um, which I'll show you the stretches I use, actually. So stretching with Ian. Let's, let's do it. So what I like to do is I like to take my hands and lock them just like this. And I like to do a rotating. Um, and I'll just do this and just kind of warm up my wrist a lot. I actually learned a lot of this from martial arts. So um, do a lot of like wrist rotations and then I'll like put my hand together like a prayer and kind of do a light stretch and just rotate. And this really helps open up the wrist and you just do it nice. You're not trying to force anything and then just kind of lightly shake. Um, and then two, comfortable position on your tablet, whatever tablet you're running, whether it be a display or whether it be just a basic you know, uh, tablet on the table, positioning, posture, all that stuff is really good. So I try to have my shoulders relaxed while I'm sculpting, but also in a comfortable position that my wrist isn't strained like this or like this. It's just nice and relaxed. So I have a nice straight line between wrist and elbow. So once I get a little bit more comfortable with that, it just makes it a little bit easier. And then breaks, frequent breaks are super important. So taking your time, it's real. It's really, uh, really, really important to do that. But I used to during lockdown. I actually started experiencing a lot of wrist pains when I was pushing like 12, 12, 14 hours a day. Sculpt, 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 sculpt. Eight of those were streaming, and then a quick break, and then in the Discord, and then constant. Like, yeah, it it got to be um, a lot. So you you do want to just kind of like take care of yourself. It's important. It's important. So, and typically, I would say because you're probably you're hustling right now, right? Um, it's important to just kind of you know make sure you're taking care, and you're just doing some light stretches, and trying not to overwork yourself too too much, as obviously easier said than done. I get it. see here um do, 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 do. cool okay trying to keep uh pose trying to pose in blender but then my transpose mesh gets mixed up afterwards we love cc4 and it's a uh but it's big spend on a hobby dude i totally feel what you mean um what part what are you having you saying that your transpose mesh is getting messed up afterwards um do you mean like it's it's exploding is is that what you're referring to and if so are you trying to send dynamesh or are you trying to send like low resolution because if you send dynamesh you're going to have a lot of chance of uh of your mesh getting messed up so you want to try to avoid that as much as possible
My microphone died. One second. Let me know if you guys can hear me. Okay. Oh, where did I get my awesome Twitch light board on the wall? So my girlfriend actually got me that. Um, so it just says Iris Sculptor. She got it for me like, oh God, right when I started streaming in lockdown. Because my original name on it was IR Sculptor. Um, and then that didn't roll off the tongue. And she already ordered this and had it made by the time I changed it to IR Sculpts. But I love that because that's like a like it's like a spot in history. So yeah, super cool. It's a nice, it's a nice lightweight board with like acrylic and then uh, like frosted acrylic, and then it has like the stickers and LED panel. It's pretty cool. Can hear you great. Okay, great. Loud and clear. Awesome. Yeah, this headphone does not hold battery charge much at all, which is crazy. Of course, I'm always I'm always on it too, like all the time. So you know, there's that. Yeah, so I actually, I'd have to find out where where uh, where she got it from. All right, let's do this. Let's increase the resolution a little bit. Let's pop in these nostrils. There we go. And then let's. So this is where I'm going to be taking some stylized or or art. I was going to say stylized freedom. I'm going to be taking some artistic liberties here because. Um, I'm using reference to see how the Cyclops, of course, was made in the game, and I want it to feel like it belongs in the God of War, uh, God of War uh, world. I'm just kind of like honoring the overall look and feel. But this is where I find that some creative freedom allows me to just make it my own, but still reference the original source material. So. I see how they did the nostril, which is still like kind of like a nice small nose, but still I kind of want to just, you know, design around it, make it look kind of cool, different and just unique. So that's also too, I can say like, oh yeah, I know that's my piece. Like I can recognize it from afar. Afar, afar. If you guys know what that's from, let me know. <laughs> You'll have to message. Absolutely, yeah. By the way, Ian, nice to see you on the style uh, on the uh, style league, sharing all the stuff. Uh, bring nice vibes and ton of knowledge, man. Thanks, Gus, dude. That means a lot. Super happy to be here. I love it. You know, it's funny too because uh, uh, me and the guys were talking about uh, coming on the show and. Um, when I was chatting with them about it, I was telling them, I was like, man, I want to get back into live streaming on like, you know, on my personal time. Cause I really do miss that. But also at the same time too, like it's a lot of prep work. It's a lot of like setup on the back end, And um, sometimes I don't have time during the week to really do a lot of that back end stuff. And then that's when we were talking about me coming on here and I, I just, freaking loved it so i feel super honored to be here and it's fun to get to hang out and i feel like i already know you guys a lot so it's really cool to just come in and hang out all right so we're not going to be taking anything to final tonight but here's the thing so even though i'll be sculpting this project on the side off stream i have plans to take this into substance painter so we'll be spotlighting substance painter through the workflow and then we'll also be spotlighting uh 3d print prep so i plan on like you know i'll probably be streaming like once or twice a month here and so the project will be alive and stuff and i'll do updates in my discord and in the silas league discord um so there'll be updates for that as well but as we go through you know i want to hit more more tools of the forge because you know, we're, the, we're the digital forge now. It's the segment here, and I love it. Also, which is really cool. Check this out. Hold on. I think I think it's here. Let me see real fast. If I was it, boom, right there. Oh yeah, we could do, yeah, we could do that. Dude, Raul did this. Uh, he helped me put this together on this uh, the digital forge name on top. So it's super cool. Let's go back to chat. Bam. 
Oh, it's around 240 million. So not sure about that. Yeah, that's a bit high. That's a bit high. Probably want to reduce that uh, teensy weensy a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I reshape this head just a bit. But I really want to make sure I find the apex of his head because this is what's really cool. The widest spot of the head is always about the first third from the top down. Uh, that's where your hat's raised. That's where like it starts to reshape, right? So it starts up wide and then comes in and then it starts tapering. So a lot of heads and stuff like that here. What I like to do is call that out. So somewhere right around here, which is about the first third of his head, right? That's going to be quote, the widest part. And what's fun about that is I can already check the measurement of myself on this eye socket. And I want that eye socket to live within that first third as well. So I'm actually going to raise this up just a little bit. Okay, so that makes it a little bit more sense. And then now here, I'm going to take this, I'm going to start pushing this in. And then same thing here at the top. So now I'm getting that wider spot right about here ish. So that's looking a lot nicer. And I do want to find his hairline, even though Cyclopses are, quote, well, most of them, well, maybe they got some hair. The one I'm doing is bald, <laughs> and bald is beautiful. So I want to still establish, though, where a hairline would exist on the character. I think that's super important. It really gives you a lot of information. So somewhere right around here would be ideally where that would live. And all skulls right by the ear would have some sort of, has this little indentation on the side. And then we're going to, I don't feel like sculpting an ear from scratch feel like just kind of modifying one. So I'm going to grab this IMM parts right here and I'm going to pick an ear and we're going to, that was not the right way to go about doing that. So let's give him some tiny little ears. Push that in just like that. Maybe too small. Let's go a little bit bigger. I think he'll look funny with smaller ears. Funny in a good way, of course. So I'm going to mask that the ear off. And then we're going to grab the move brush real quick and start pushing that part in. There we go. Yeah, something like that. Cool. And then we'll dynamesh that and make that all one piece. There we go. And let's take a look at what we got now. Yeah, he's looking gross. Love it. All right, let's go ahead and save real quick. Let's see. Choo -choo -choo -choo. What job did you have before being a sculptor? Nice. That's a great question, man. So I have a lot of random job experience, but um basically when i when i first learned about sculpting was actually when i was in aerospace and i was doing manufacturing mill and lathe work um, i did that for a little over 12 years so a really uh nuts bolts bearings for aerospace um but then that world introduced me to 3d printing because 3d printing is obviously another form of manufacture and what was cool about that was um, a buddy of mine at the time, his name's Travis. He he actually was. Uh, I was talking to him about all this fun stuff, and he was into props. And I asked him, I was like, "Hey, man, how do all these statues get designed and stuff?" And you know, he's like, "Oh, dude, that's that's ZBrush. ZBrush is like the number one sculpting application." And I was like, well, "I don't know what that is, but let's go." I didn't even really know what sculpting was, to be honest. <laughs> so. 
I started learning ZBrush and about four years in is when I started picking up light freelance work and um, any, anywhere I can get it. But what was cool was I eventually transitioned from, uh, from aerospace into uh, graphic design for the film industry. And so when they learned I could sculpt, they started picking on smaller jobs where I could sculpt for them. And I started making board games and little figures. And we were actually establishing putting together a whole lot. And I was doing that for a little bit before the pandemic. And then when the pandemic happened, um, I went immediately into freelance. And then my first real big job that I got as a sculptor was for this company, coach.com. And I'll go to my art station so I can show you because it's actually a lot of fun. Um, and so some of you might recognize this, but if I were to sign in real quick, I did this, um, I did this piece called Rexy. If I go to my profile <clears throat> and I did this piece right here, which was awesome. And this was like my first like professional big time piece that I got. And I sculpted this for them. Uh, I was also uh, finishing my, my course at the 3d character workshop when I got this and this was for coach.com and it was super cool. And then after this immediately Funko picked me up. Um, in fact, the guy who hired me for this piece, he basically said like, I'm going to scoop you up before anybody else can. But then after this, I told him, I said, I already had a job lined up. I was also talking to big shot toy works um, at the time. Glenn is super awesome. And he was going to give me a lot of freelance work before I got the job at Funko and then Funko turned around and basically said, um, you're, you know, you're ours. <laughs> you're, we're going to keep you busy. And I didn't have time for, for anything else after that, which is super cool. Um, this also got manufactured, uh, and, and put together, uh, at the New York store. And yeah, so it was, it was really, really cool. So I had some pretty big jobs, um, right when I broke out, um, and partly because I had nothing but time to really build my portfolio and kind of quote, knock it out of the park, so to speak. So, and then I was at Funko when the Smackdown job came up. So, um, yeah, it was, dude, it was really, really a lot of fun. So super cool. And that's, that's basically how we broke into the industry. And there was just a lot of odd jobs from time to time. I've done props for games. I've done a lot of just random small 3d print jobs. Um, some companies stuck around, some companies went under just anywhere I could find work. A lot of the work I did was jumping on, on Instagram and Twitter and finding companies reaching out and being like, Hey, I'm a sculptor. I do this. I do that. If you ever want to work together, let me know. And it was a lot of fun. Um, also, too, when I was streaming on a regular basis, um, I didn't know it at the time. But later, uh, I had discovered that there were a lot of people in the industry who were ending up watching my live streams. So there are <laughs> there are people that I do business with today that came out um, as we were talking and saying, like, hey, uh, you know, I used to watch you when you were streaming at now uh as iris sculpts all the time and that was really cool so you never know who's watching is the fun part um but it's neat because it helps me network and and get to where i am today so really just uh, a lot of a lot of fun in the process but yeah so, th so that's what i was doing beforehand um and like i said i also have some photography background so i did wedding photography my dad was a photographer when i was growing up so i actually did photography in high school um, and I use all of that knowledge in my rendering skills because the, well, I mean, if you can replicate real life, uh, lighting scenarios and such, then that's going to be very beneficial to you as well. So, yeah, that's my life story. <laughs> uh, Travis Jackson. Sorry, Travis Sullivan. Sorry. Yes. Sorry. I can't credit, can't credit you. <laughs> you are an amazing person to hang out with. So thanks for coming into Discord, buddy. <laughs> oh, yeah. There we go. Okay.
going to go ahead and give this a little, there's always a little bone right over here in the elbow that protrudes out a little bit. So we want to kind of line that up and get that in there. He's a big guy, so I'm not really worried about how much um, muscle he has on him. I'm really going for, uh, for mass. Just trying to find the right word. <laughs> And I like to sculpt in the direction of the muscle for the most part. Feels to me like it just gives me a more nicer, more realistic uh, feel to it. So something that I can kind of wrap my head around. Okay, so I'm not going to worry too much about detail at this point, but let's go ahead and get the loincloth on him. And then let's also dynamesh this together um, officially so that things get merged a bit. To be honest, I love staying in the Valley of the Suck for a lot longer than I used to. I used to try to rush out of it, but as of late, I've been finding that it's been quite enjoyable staying in here longer and kind of just looking at all the things that I'm finding wrong. And tomorrow I'm gonna wake up and guarantee I'm gonna hate most of what I see today. So that would be good to correct things as well with a fresh pair of eyes. But let's go ahead and get some sort of like a loincloth on him, so to speak. Yeah, dude. If you haven't been, I know you'll love shopping around Frank and Sons in Industry City. Oh my gosh. Okay, I've been meaning to go to Frank's and Sons. So yeah. I should probably go and do that. So many cool and genuine figures or unique figures, video game and merch. It's a nerds flea market in paradise. Ooh. So you're, you're telling me I'm going to go there and spend money. That that's, that's the translation that you just, <laughs> that I took from that. <laughs> I have learned to love keeping uh, dirty for as long as possible. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. It's super cool. Also, too, you know, I feel like a lot of times you can't get all the right information uh, 100% until you start putting in all the other stuff that makes it what it is, right? So we definitely want to keep things in there. So let's rename this. Let's call this teeth. I don't remember if I actually saved. So I'm going to call this head, right? At this point, what I like to do with this point here is I definitely am going to be Z remeshing him very soon. So the first name obviously is what is going to be, you know, the, the name of your, of your ZTL. So the first subtool always gets that naming convention. Eventually what I do is when I get this base mesh close enough to where I'm happy with it, where it's acceptable to move on with my life, but not be committed 100% to it, th then what I do is I save off another version and then I just hide this. And that's my backup mesh. So I always use this naming convention as a way to create a backup mesh in, in the process. So when I come back and I decide that he's ready to be kind of moved on a bit, that's when I'll, I'll go in there and make that change. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to give him that kind of loincloth approach. And I'm going to really approach this as simple as possible. So I'm going to grab a plane. I'm going to come in here. And we're going to turn on our wireframe and we're going to just reconstruct this to be pretty low. And then we're going to delete higher. And then we're just going to come in here. So I'm going to turn on symmetry, grab this and kind of move this in. Same thing here. Kind of come in, move that in just a little bit. Okay, turn off symmetry, recenter that. And then we're just going to go ahead and do something like this. And I'm going to just add some thickness to this, but I'm not going to smooth it. I just want to be able to see the front and the back side as much as possible. And then I'm going to put this towards the bottom. Also, too, this is his eye, so let's call this eye. Boop, there we go. And then I'm going to go ahead and group. Well, wrong button. No, I hit it. 
I hit the wrong button. I hit Control G, which does a Go Z application, and that automatically opened up uh, Cinema for me. So, sounds like a road trip. It really does. Yeah. All right. So Control Z is obviously the shortcut to Go Z your object into another program. We're not using Cinema today, but we will soon. So that's not what I meant. I meant Control F. Too many Photoshop shortcuts. Okay, let's call this. Um, also, I think uh, I gave a Substance Painter class today. So I have those shortcuts in my head too. So we'll call this Loincloth. Boom, done. And then this will be the front. I'm going to go ahead and Control Shift D, duplicate that. And then I'm going to go ahead, rotate this, turn this around 180 degrees. And we're going to go ahead and cover his bum just a little bit. Say something like this. There we go. OK, great. And now here what we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead. I'm actually going to duplicate his body. And from here, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to delete parts that I don't need right now. And I'll show you why in just a second. We're gonna do some cool stuff. So I'm gonna go here, modify topology, delete hidden. And then I'm gonna take slice curve. So control shift, slice curve. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to basically create a cut this way. So I'm gonna go like this, this, boom, boom, boom. Just so it kind of follows his body enough. And then I'm going to go to zero measure, keep groups down to zero, adapt with adaptive down to zero. This is going to help keep the quads super nice. And then we're going to go ahead and zero mesh. Something happened to my audio. Mm, can you guys hear me okay? Boop, 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 boop. It says I'm connected, but I can reconnect it if I need to. <laughs> Did it go weird? Oh, no. Here, hold on. Hold on. Sounds high-pitched. Interesting. Okay, hold on one second. Mm. I can hear you, but the pitch is high. Interesting. Slightly choppy. How about now? I muted myself, and then I brought it back. Oh, it happened when I opened cinema. Ugh, great. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, let me see something. Hold on. I'm going to hide myself. Okay, how does that sound? Does that sound better? Let me know. <laughs> We're off to see the wizard. There you go. It's for you, Leonard. <laughs> Still the same. No, that sucks. Okay, okay. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, it's probably because... It's probably because, unfortunately, the GPU got engaged and it got weird. So let's do this. I'm going to try a Gozi application. We'll try it again. And if not, I'll finish my thoughts and then we'll end the stream. Um, we'll, 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 we'll wind down the stream a little bit. So hold on. <laughs>
Hold on. <laughs> am I back? Did that? Am I back now? This is the climax of the show. <laughs> uh, hold on. Hold on. Still, the, is it still the same? Hold on. Let's let's allow let's allow that. Same. No. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna try something, and then if not, then we'll 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 we're almost at a point anyway where I was thinking about slowly wrapping it up. <laughs> the camera is stunning. The voice is shocking. All right. Cool. Well. Okay. All right. So hold that thought. <laughs> I bet you my voice is still the same. I bet this didn't do anything else. There you go. Got Cyclops buns. Uh, Sparky went. Uh, Sparky left for the day, I think. Okay. Let's go ahead and close that. My voice still the same. <laughs> Okay, well, we're, here, yeah, it's listening. Okay, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you this real quick. Hold on. All right, so this will be more or less me speaking. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like that. Like that. Boop. Like that. <laughs> like that. Yeah, very cool. <laughs> Great. Now I just now I'm just self conscious of my voice. Okay. Uh, we're gonna delete that real quick. So delete hidden. Kind of get this in there a little bit. Okay. For the last 15 minutes of the show, you should raise your voice, <laughs> raise your pitch over your voice just for fun. I probably should now, huh? Okay. Well, that's okay. Um, look, we actually did a lot. We actually did a lot. We got a good block out going on. So you're just going to have to deal with my pitch voice for a second, and then we're going to wrap up the show. Um, but yeah, so here we are. We got our main block out. Uh, not um, not 100% at all where I'm going to want it to be, but close enough to where I, it's a great starting spot. So from here, I'm actually going to be just kind of taking a look at it. The hands are atrocious. Everything needs to be still reworked. We're definitely in the Valley of the Suck. But I'm going to be posting updates in the Discord of Silas League and my Discord. So, um, I mean, you can compensate. Just speak really loud. <laughs> the loop trick was rad. Going to have to go back and rewatch. Yeah, I'll explain it. Basically, you just make a poly group. You just make a... Uh, go back and rewatch it. But all I did was just zero meshed it. I got the section I needed. Got two different poly groups. Then stroke, curve functions, frame mesh. Really cool trick. And then use the curve brush. Anyway, um, but here we're going to definitely do a cleanup pass tomorrow at some point. And then throughout the week, I'll just kind of tweak it. But this is a great base start. And everything is looking closer to what I want it to be. And again, um, we're going to be using him as our standard of at least the original look and feel of all of this. So um, I know my voice is going crazy. Uh, but... Um, yeah, we'll, we'll end it here this time. <laughs> um, this is about the time, anyway, I would be wrapping up these streams because a couple hours, you know, probably like two, three hours is ideal um, for what I was going to want to do for that. But thank you all for being here, especially dealing with this now very crazy voice. Not sure what happened, um, but I'll definitely not hit Gozy next time. <laughs>
Uh, I'm going to go ahead and end this share stream. And yeah, guys, that is it. I'm going to let you know. Uh, we're going to, I'm going to talk to guys when I'm going to stream next. But guys, thank you so much. Appreciate all of you. Everyone's awesome. Thanks for being here. And until next time, guys, we will talk to you later. Bye, 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 bye. Hold on. Where's that one video?